Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the Nerd Herd Comic Book Club. Your number one stop for stellar reviews of volumes, arcs or stories that us or yourselves choose. You can find us live every Wednesday on YouTube, Facebook and Twitch and the replay on all podcast networks. Take a seat, get yourselves and your opinions ready as it's time to join the herd. But first, please put your hands together for your hosts, Shane, Phil, and Scott, as they kick off this week's discussion. Hello, true believers. Welcome to the Nerd Herd Comic Book Club. And we are carrying on with our Spider-Man wave, our Spider-Man month, uh, because he turned 80 years old. This month. Whoa. Turning? Has he just turned? Phil, do you remember the date? Um, It's 60. Yeah, I was going to say, he's not, he's not as old as Batman. <laughs> yeah. 60 years well, old. At least really speaking, Peter Parker wasn't, you know, he wasn't year not when the comic came out. So oh, he might be, he might be six, oh. seven, seven or something. Yeah. But it's this month. Yeah. Um, so yes, thank you everyone for joining so far. So my name is Scott, if you haven't met me already. And the other boys I've got here, we've got Shane... Oh, hoi hoi. And we've got Philip. Hello. And if you haven't been able to tell already, we are talking about Spider-Man Blue from 2002. Uh, we are covering issues one to six. Uh, this was created by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale. Uh, colours by Richard Starkins and Wes Abbott. And letters by Steve Buccioletto. Oh, nice. Say that again. Buccioletto. A butchaletto. I, mean, I, like... I was just watching The Godfather 2 as well before I came on here. Ah, Sounds nice, like an nice. Italian sausage. <laughs> maybe it is. Who knows? Maybe it is. Maybe that's, maybe that's like his secret like comic book name. Butchaletto. Uh, okay, so let me tell you what this book is about. Essentially, it's a love story uh, and it's kind of set after Gwen Stacy has died. And uh, Peter Parker is kind of, I want to say he's grieving uh, and he's using kind of a tape recorder to kind of speak to her one more time and kind of tell her his side of the story and how events unfolded and how they met and, you know, how MJ may have gotten in the way and all these other things. And just him being a superhero in general gotten in the way of him having such an amazing time with Gwen and if he regretted it or if he didn't regret it and what did he say uh good before bad or bad before good anyway yeah so it's yeah. essentially uh in my opinion uh, a very touching love story uh and you just kind of follow that and it is a story it's basically a flashback story and as we all know love is tragic so. love is tragic uh, but that's that okay before we start talking about the book let's say hi to everyone there's quite a few people in today we have james copley hi peeps hi james thank you for joining uh we've got uh martin even all i think we have a top 10 contender this week Ooh, like i don't care if it's not number one but top 10 i'm happy you know uh lewis is in hey buddy uh, we've also got uh, Connie. She says, "Hi guys, I'm currently walking home, so I'll join you. Join again when I'm back. Better walk quick." <laughs> uh, and we've got uh, Dominic. He's here on time. Amazing selection this week, gents. Thank you very much. Um, I chose it on a whim because I know nothing about Spider-Man, so uh, I guess that <laughs> that's lucky for me. Um, okay. Uh, so um, Shane, would you mind telling us? Uh, initially, what do you thought of Spider-Man Blue? I'm torn because I really liked half of this book and I really disliked the other half of this book. Was it that polarizing? It really was. Like okay. the monologuing, pining, you know, love struck Peter for Gwen. I didn't like that at all. Um, read this without the blue boxes and just read the fun part and it's a fun old time i really enjoyed the actual things that were happening and you know all the spoken words but then i just got, i was just like damn parker she's dead get over it you're married like this is really really 
really bad to be simping over a dead girl. She's dead. You've got MJ. MJ is far superior to Gwen Stacy. You won, mate. Move on. So, yeah, I was really torn at the end of this when he's right when he's there with his little tape recorder. He's got his five little discs. So he's like been doing this every year since she died. It's like, dude, that's creepy. And it's really disrespectful to MJ. So that's, I think that was my major gripe with it. The fact that he's married and he's on Valentine's Day, he's talking to Gwen Stacy. I was like, no. But the other savage. half, I really, really enjoyed. Um... Absolute savage. <laughs> See, the, tough, the, to the opposite of that, I actually preferred that ahead of all the kind of fun stuff the fun stuff was quite what's the word non-consequential it didn't really it didn't mean anything it was just showing you what spider-man does on a day-to-day basis like fighting these enemies like the main crux of the story was his grief for for gwen and i i mean I, you know i may look like a big burly tough you know old man but i'm i'm pretty soft i'm a bit of a wimp and I got really emotional reading this book, especially okay. towards the also at the end. And I went back, looked at a few things after, and I was just like, "Oh, it's so sad." And I love that part of it. Me I love the, the 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 I love the love stuff. I love the emotion and the fact that he, he is talking to to Gwen. It is a bit odd, but I suppose people grieve in different ways. But what kind of made it more emotional for me is the fact that MJ is like part of it. Like she's, you know, the, the idea is he he loved Gwen, lost Gwen. Now has MJ and both of them just understand that Gwen was there and that, that's okay. Made it seem like MJ was the booby prize and I really don't like that. So disrespectful to MJ. You can't disrespect MJ in my presence. I But like no. so consider it from a real perspective now, right? Like I'm the same as Phil. I love love. Anything like the reason I picked this book was because it was, you know, of how it's how it was described. And I knew it would be this kind of vibe. And I was like, yeah, that's that's a bit of me, that. And I really enjoyed it. And, you know, if you think of it, um, well, I think of it from my perspective, okay? If, you know, if, God forbid, I lost Amy and then someone else came on the scene, I would hope that they would understand that I would still have this incredibly big hole and spot for for Amy. And, and I feel like this is what this is. And MJ understands... Uh, that that's, that's why the whole thing at the end is like, you know, say hi to say her for hi me. me. And it yeah, was at I that get... point I was like, <laughs> <laughs> no, see, I do, I get that, and that would that makes perfect sense uh, if MJ didn't know Gwen, but the fact that she knew Gwen and it made it, he made it sound like they only got together because Gwen died, and like they were both grieving Gwen's death. So it's like, well, we might as well just be together now because there's no Gwen. Mm. He made her sound like she was the booby prize because as long as Gwen, if Gwen was still alive, he'd still be with Gwen. He like he made it sound like he wasn't interested in MJ. It's Gwen's the one he wanted. She's dead. Might as well have MJ. And that's the issue I have with it. I didn't like that part. Had but they Dominic... just not done the married part and mm. just had him right talking, like he, if MJ wasn't in it at the end and he doesn't say that he's married to her and that hasn't happened yet, and he's just, you know, sending messages to Gwen, I'd be absolutely fine with it. But it's the disrespect towards MJ I really didn't right. like. See, Dominic mentions in the comments there that Gwen's what brought MJ and Peter together. And I think that's how it actually went down in, in the books back in the day as well. Like I'm not, I haven't read that far ahead of the older Silver Age stuff, but I'm pretty certain that plays a part on them two t- together. And what I thought was weird about this story, so I, I love MJ too. I think, I think she's, I think she's a phenomenal character. She was quite like um, full on and flirtatious in this. Like she's like, and she's like forced herself into that situation because yeah. Peter was just Gwen, 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 and then this flipping this this gorgeous redhead comes on the scene and just Peter has no idea who she is. That's that's my neighbor's niece, and next all of a sudden she's just like in my face. It's like my I like guy, it. yeah, <laughs> my guy, yeah, yeah. It was cool, but no, I do think. Uh, kind of the MJ Peter Parker bond is stronger because of what happened to Gwen but they make no bones about it I think if, if Gwen didn't die Peter would he would be with Gwen I think so can I ask uh who came first like what what relationship actually happened first Gwen was it Gwen yeah so what's this thing about MJ then why <laughs> if Gwen came first I then I don't because MJ's saying? far superior, more, far more independent, far more interesting, far more beautiful. And, you know, they knew Gwen Stacy was boring. That's why they killed her off. 
but get rid of her. Okay. So pathetic. <laughs> uh, they were both, to be fair, in this book, they were both beautiful characters. Thirsty? In this book. <laughs> they were both incredibly thirsty in this book. <laughs> Yeah, what, what, I don't. What what was the initial attraction to Peter? I mean, I know I know we see at the end of the book he's got he's built like a brick house, and yeah, like what like we, I think it was we the, really... the danger side, wasn't it? It was like because this is what I'm going off to. Yeah, so Flash Thompson was he meant he he was the jockey, he's one the football and had all the chicks, but that that may work when you're a young high school pupil, but as you get older. Like that's just you're just a jerk. So obviously, like you know, Peter's like doing like chasing Spider Man for for photographs, or at least I think he is. And instead of running away from danger, he runs into it, kind of thing. So that's but that's bound to like trigger something. It's like I need to pay more attention to this fella and not this jackass who just talks about football with nothing between his ears. Mm. So I think that's maybe why the, he was getting all the girls all of a sudden because like I said he's seen that transition because Flash was questioning himself like why are these two hot chicks interested in parker and not me yeah. like well that's why yeah that's fair enough um yeah i wanted to i, wanted to, I bring it up later bring it up later um what did you what did you think of the art then like we've read some of tim's sales stuff before but was it more we wasn't it like the long of the cowl wasn't that tim sale right thing yeah um so i'm have we looked at anything with his art before the long halloween Yes. That man long Halloween. Yes, you're right. And and I actually enjoyed this more, I think. Because the if you remember Batman the Long Halloween, it was quite uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It was like purposely stylized a certain way. Like remember the Joker had like a million teeth in his mouth and they're all mm. falling out. Like it, it went for a certain like aesthetic and look of the characters. I don't think they he tried anything overly dramatic here. He just drew his art and I think it, the story benefited from that because I, th- I thought i thought the book through it was was great it's fantastic yeah. love the art and just just to let anyone else know if 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 people really did enjoy this book and the style of how it was written and how it was drawn then you should really look into was it daredevil yellow mm-hmm. and hulk gray uh because captain america white and i think there's another oh, one in there that? somewhere too yeah oh, okay so there's a few more then as well but yeah there's they've done a bunch of different stories in this kind of color series um so if you did enjoy this then go ahead and look at those as well i think they brought a collection out there's definitely a collection for the blue yellow and gray yeah because having never read this before and not owning this book it's something i i i love it that much that i i'm seeking that out that there's an omnibus of all the collections together which i think is quite hard to get but i am going to get it at some point yeah um but yeah i think you know i didn't really have a problem with the art going on um all i can say is there's a hell of a lot of blue going on. Um, Not and... as much as I thought. I thought the yeah, whole book was going to be blue. Yeah, I thought it was going to be like Superman red and blue or Wonder mm-hmm. Woman black and gold. You know where like the whole book is. Yeah, yeah. Just that. Yeah, so I would... Even yeah. the, the opening page where it was just black and blue, like him flying over the, the bridge or yeah. whatever. I thought that's what we were getting through the whole book. I was really surprised to see red, to be honest. Yeah. But I, was... I actually, I, I liked it after that. I was like, yeah, this is actually better because... Yes, it's called Spider Man Blue, but the, the the blue isn't the theme, as in the colour blue. It's obviously blue because he's yeah, he's sad, which is yeah, fair. Yeah. But yeah, I, I thought the same thing before. It's, this is just gonna be blue and black the whole way through it, and I was surprised. I was kind of but, excited, but yeah, yeah it's fine. I think I think detail wise, it may have gotten a bit um, messy if it was all just black and blue. Yeah. Um, yeah. But not like uh, the only thing. The only thing that ever bothers me with with the art, with especially with the Tim Sale stuff we've seen, is how far apart the eyes are <laughs> on the faces, uh, especially on, on Gwen and MJ. I was like, geez, they're like really, really far. Um, same, <laughs> not. That? Yeah, I, I had noticed at the time, but now I'm just flicking through. They, they do seem unusually far apart. Yeah. Um, and- Chins are a little bit pointy as well. Um, and going in, like like yeah, kind of like inside like, of it. Yeah, I can't remember what issue it is, but MJ's walking away from him. Um, I think he's talking to Gwen. Oh no, it's when the, they arrive at the party, and Gwen comes in first, and then MJ comes in. And in the bottom scene, when everyone's putting their coats on, Peter, MJ's walking away, and you see her from the side, 
and she's got this chin sticking. She looks like the Wicked Witch of the West. Like she, and she's also got this like grin on her face, and it, <laughs> it did make me chuckle. Yeah, Aunt May had a pretty pointy chin as well at times, and uh, I had again it's one of those things I hadn't noticed, but now you've mentioned it, it's like yeah, you're yeah. right. I just had a quick flick through as well, yeah. I just noticed that <laughs> but as well. All, all, all the guys' chins look normal. That's, wonder, that's quite weird. Yeah, like, it? the guys look okay. When everyone's in a costume, it looks great. Oh, um, Spider-Man looks fantastic in oh, this yeah. book, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah, we've got oh, some really good pages to show flawless you Flawless well. Spider-Man design in this book. Yeah, yeah 100%. Um, right, so Lewis has told us he really enjoyed the look of this book. Uh, it really pulled him in, and it kept him reading. And one evening, he got so invested, he read three of the books, one after another. Nice. Awesome. Great. You know, that's what we like to see. And um, Dominic is saying he loved Daredevil Yellow. And uh, I, I don't know if, if Martin is just saying, if he liked Hulk Grey, but he's just saying, Hulk Grey. Yeah, Hulk Grey. <laughs> <laughs> see, j- just by going to the, the blue theme and... How we expected everything to be blue and black, yeah. but obviously, Scott, you'd say that it would be quite messy with the detail if it was. But things like Gwen Stacy and MJ, they always appeared really vibrant, like they stood oh, out of every, yeah. of every of every page. Like the and, blondest blonde. Yeah, and exactly, and even like the, the, the red hair with the on MJ too, with a bit of black, like they stood out. So you're right, hundred percent. They wouldn't look anywhere near as good if it was just blue. Then what you do is you call it Spider Man Blue and Yellow. And then you can, uh, red and yellow, and then you can have their hair colours being the predominant things in the book. And there like some Sin was, City vibes. Yeah, yeah, there was a page like that, which I was actually thinking was going to pick. I think near the start, I can see the find at night where it was blue and black with, with something just stood out. And I was expecting the Sin City mm. kind of fight because that's why all the current renditions of Spider-Man, Red, White, and Blue, and Carnage, what's it called, Black, White, and Blood. They have one color that sticks out from the rest of it. Yeah. That, that's what I was expecting, to be honest. But, yeah. Never mind. Yeah, Wonder Woman Black and Gold does an amazing job with just black and gold. It's an expensive color as well, gold. <laughs> um, right, should we, should we show some pages? Because I'm dying to have a look, yeah. a, a bit more of a look at some of these pages because it was absolutely gorgeous in some points. Um, we'll go clockwise, shall we? So, Shane, we'll start off with you, mate. Oh, still my page. <laughs> I really, really love the Green Goblin on this page. I love the stretchiness of him and the, the just the gangliness, the legs and the fingers and everything about it. And it just looked fantastic. When I saw this, I was like, yeah, this is my page straight away. Mm-hmm. I just, I absolutely love it. The way he goes flying, the detail, everything about it. But that the Green Goblin like that is awesome. And his face being like in the shadow of his big yeah, bright just yellow eyes, eyes and, and teeth. teeth. Yeah, it's cool. Um, that's why I was And there's no monologue nice. on the page. <laughs> there's none of that useless <laughs> monologuing on the page. Oh, come on. <laughs> I can't say that. Um, he's got a really long foot, though, isn't he? Yeah, like, <laughs> where, look where his knee ends and his like, toe ends. Like, it's just like, <laughs> like a whole other person in there. Yeah. But I kind of love the, I don't know, it's, it looks like it's drawn in a totally different style to anything else. Everything's just lanky and dangly and everything is just really just stretched out. It is cool. It is a good page to look at. But I even like the, the panel on the left. I don't know what it is. It's hard to ex- explain it. Again, it's the shadows. Yeah. Like the, as I'm assuming there was the moon or whatever was coming through the blinds. Uh, and it just looks really cool. Like you know, grabbing the pumpkin with his web and firing it back to him. I just think the whole page is cool. Excellent. Nice. And, and Shane stole it from me. <laughs> okay, the we'll... comic, the comic book report makes a good point. It does look like the Grinch, and I did think it looks oh. like the Grinch when I was reading it. <laughs> you know, like when the when the thing explodes at the end, all the presents off the oh, yeah. off the off the sleigh, and he just goes flying. It does. <laughs> all right, Philly, let's go to you. This was just one again. I wanted this is the page I was talking about actually that, that had the red popping off the blue and black, and Shane calls it useless monologue. Um, this is obviously the bridge where, where Gwen died and he leaves a single rose, which obviously falls over. And I just think, like, I, I didn't pick this at the start, I picked this after I read the story because I thought it, it was quite like symbolic, like, really kind of like the emotion that hit me 
like this was the start of this, the fresh start of the book. This is what it was. It kicked off from there. I just didn't See, know it at that time. I had to go back and, and appreciate that. This, even though I like knew the, you know, I knew the fact that Gwen had died, I didn't understand if that bridge had any sort of, uh, what am I trying to say? Weight. Um, you know, mm-hmm. I, I didn't know what the point of that bridge was. I didn't know she died on that bridge. So that bit was a bit lost on me. But you can definitely start to kind of feel, mm-hmm. you know, the vibe of the book pretty much straight away. Yeah. It's definitely. just very Batman, though, isn't it? Bruce Wayne does the exact same thing. He goes and takes roses to Crime Alley where his parents were killed. And he leaves DC, them there every... Though, yeah, it's but just, it's very human emotion, Shane. Everyone knows about it. It's just, like, not very unique. He could have done something a bit more special. Well, I mean, it's he could have saved her to begin with, but he didn't because he's useless. <laughs> but, you know, a rose will do. I guess she's happy with that. <laughs> oh Spider-Man doesn't know Batman, so that rose is special to him. That's that's all that matters. Um, Dominic's really enjoying the... the... The polarization between you both there. Love that fills in the exact opposite. Blue and only monologue. And uh, Shane is like, no monologue. Give me the fun bits. Uh, my page. Sorry, Shane. Mm, I, I'm, I'm reiterating the whole thing of I love love. And this is one of the, towards the end of the last issue where Gwen, you know, sneaks into Pete's bedroom, goes, oh, look at this Valentine's Day card. And then goes, you know, Though it was me, will you be my Valentine? And then kisses him. And I don't know what it was about this page. I think it's just the whole the positions of the bodies. And it just looks really, I don't know, slow and soft and smooth. And just everything is just, uh, I don't know, it's just a bit of a perfect moment with it. Um, and I thought, you know, Tim Sale did a really good job of kind of capturing capturing that. Um and I just, yeah, it was at this point where I was starting to be like, okay, here we go, <laughs> like, you know, because cause, cause I knew she's dead. So, and then from there, you know, the last few pages then, it just it just kind of stayed at that kind of emotional level for me then. See, I just read it as Gwen only wanted him because MJ wanted him and she didn't want MJ to have him. But I just, I wasn't getting the vibe that she actually wanted him. Like, she just didn't, like, another girl was showing him attention. So she's like... I'll be in there. But Gwen was great. Gwen was, you know, was there before MJ thinking about it in this book. Like she, she, you can tell there was something straight from the off. And actually, MJ tried to steal Gwen's man. You know, who she thinks she is. You know what I mean? She tried to steal his man. Gwen and Peter Parker belong together. Actually, that's the lie. Because I actually think Peter Parker should be with Felicia Hardy, but that's another story. <laughs> Oh god! Yeah. For anyone listening to the podcast, Shane is absolutely disgusted by that. Black cat, come on, on Spidey. No, for each MJ. Other. MJ. Um, to break up this tension, um, Connie's home. Hey, hey, Connie, oh. welcome home. <laughs> Good. Um, okay, we had quite a few uh, viewers. Uh, pages in as well thank you guys for reading along and sending in your pages um just to reiterate if you've read this book and didn't send us a page and you want to send us pages in the future then just do that just read the book that we're going to read for the next week and then just send us a picture on instagram or facebook or yeah that's it that's it okay but yeah we've got a few pages we've got three pages in uh we've got one from james this is the very oh. last page, uh, well, yeah, which sucks. Phil, don't cry. Hold it in. Hold it in, Phil. Um, he says, all the way through the story, you have the monologue of the tapes to Gwen, uh, Peter explaining his feelings to her, and I loved the summing up of the story and title of his blue feeling at the time of her death each year and the tapes he has made to help the healing process. The bottom panel with the pictures of them together, the tape stacked up and his finger pressing the stop button is such a great end. I really feel... Uh, I really felt the feelings uh, build to that final panel. So good, man. Yeah, the stop button, I saw that as well. I was like, oh, mm-hmm. God. It's just the end of a thing. Like, I was just too invested. I, I think I just try to put myself in those in those kind of situations, and then that just makes me feel it a hell of a lot more, to be honest. It's good to know that one of us, or at least another one of us, has a heart. Scott, you know. <laughs> I have a heart. I have so much of a heart that I wouldn't be going through my ex's stuff with my wife in the house and talking to a dead ex 
with my wife she, in the she's house. She's not an axe. Like, I don't think. She she, can you call? Can you call her an axe? Because she's not. An well, axe. you're not. Still, she's not still dating her. I know, but they didn't, didn't break up. Though, did you? Like... All right, his side piece. Talking about his side piece <laughs> with his wife in the house. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. Um, Martin has sent this in. Oh, that was so awesome. That was going to be my pick, but oh. I had to go with Goblin. <laughs> All he has said is Tim Sales homage to Amazing Fantasy, issue 15. All I can say is amazing. Mm-hmm. And I also liked, I think it was like a couple pages later, where um, where MJ goes, oh, that's an amazing fantasy, uh, <laughs> when when Flash starts to talk about it. But yeah, it, like I just love the drawing. I just love yeah. how... Spider-Man looks. This just takes me back to the animated show that I used to watch as a kid. Um, it's just awesome. Done so well. And Phil loves it because there's snow. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I tried my best not to pick a page with snow because that's, you know, that's, what, I'm, that's what I'm good at, isn't it? That's what I'm, that's yeah. what I'm known for, really. But... Good for that. Yeah, and pinks and purples and yeah. yeah. Uh, we got one more page as well uh, from uh, Kev. He's not here today, but he sent a page in anyway. He says, I like a good Spidey action pose. Um, and that's what he said. The rest of what he said is his score. So <laughs> I'll read that up later. Uh, but yeah, he just loves the pose in this. Uh, so yeah, thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, I think I think you guys touched on earlier on. Spider-Man in this book looked great. The suit looked great. He looked, you know, muscular and athletic. And he just looked cool overall. I just, yeah, I, love, I loved it. It's great. Cool. Um, go in to the story now, uh, but before we go, I think Dominic is—is is, I think he's just absolutely flabbergasted and astounded by the 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 opinion you've got, Shane. He says he's never heard a hot take like this before on a book, and it's cracking him up. <sighs> to be <Sorry>. fair, <laughs> there. I mean, there were very, there were two definite stories going along, and you can't have a set with one or the other because. The story that the other kind of or the other kind of thing that was happening was this whole kind of build up with this guy lurking in the shadows, who at the start I didn't know if it was Craven. I thought it was Craven because of the whole big furry oh, thing. You knew it was Craven the whole time. But I kind of thought was it Kingpin? I don't know why I thought Kingpin. I don't know why I just had that in my head too. But the idea of him lurking in the shadows, kind of recruiting all these kind of villains to take out Spider Man, it seemed like it was building up to something like a big action scene or something else. Right, and that's one part of the story which never really occurred because it, it didn't really end i mean obviously it ended but like it could have been a lot better but that's what made me think that that's not the focus of this overall the overarching story is the whole grief and the love for gwen as opposed to like this other stuff which just happens to be what he does during the day or at night fighting crime and uh but i could definitely see how if you were expecting more from that uh, in terms of the bigger build-up better fight scene, bigger stakes, whatever, which never really, that didn't occur, didn't happen. To build up for nothing, I, I don't think. I thought the build up was fine. Um, I didn't know it was Craven right away. I think it took two or three shadowy figures for me to figure it out. Cause I think the first one, you couldn't really make out the shoulders and stuff. It was just like the head from the side. So I was like, oh, who's this? I'm quite interested. And then was like- it the dart? After this... Was it the dart? Was it maybe persuaded? <gasps> yes. Yes, when the dark cat, I was like, ah, it's Craven. All right, I know who it is now. Why are they hiding him? I know who it is. Show him, show him, show him. And then they didn't show him for like two more issues, but it's fine. But I, I thought that was so much fun, like him going through his Rhodes villains and he's fighting all different ones. I thought that was yeah. great. And then the the fact that Craven thought it was Harry. He thought Peter was, uh, Spider-Man yeah, was Harry, he so he grabs you. Harry. Yeah. yeah it yeah. was just such a clever little twist to put at the end. Mm. And the fight didn't have to go on for, you know, a whole issue. It didn't have to be city destroying. It just had to be PR doing what he does best, talking smack and kicking butt. And he did that. And he took Craven yeah. out really, I want to say really easy, but Craven got a few licks in as well. So speaking I of really the, enjoyed it. Speaking of the talking smack, um, we last week, I think we had a few issues that it was trying too hard to be funny. Mm. And, you know, all the sarcastic one-liners and stuff like that. But this time, I didn't have a problem with it whatsoever. I thought it was done really well. Like, all the all the jokes landed and anything mm. that was sarky didn't feel too much. 
and it felt smarter in a way like yeah because sometimes I, uh, that that is one of the kind of traits i think people find irritating with spider-man is the kind of quips he comes up with a lot of the time like, it's irritating at times but for this one i definitely think they didn't go too far they were quite clever in the way what they've done because they didn't want spider-man to be an irritating character so i think they done it really well as, as you're saying compared to last week and other spidey books that we've read him in um yeah it's very well done yeah one of my notes last week was that he was just grating even yeah. like the small parts he was in i know it wasn't like his book but he was grating in that book in this book he was fun and entertained to read and you root for him because he's not annoying yeah. <laughs> you know when he's annoying you're like go on rhino just stomp his head because he's annoying <laughs> me but in this you're like come on get him spidey get him and i yeah i appreciate that like i i kind of found you know three different personalities in this just for peter parker spider-man when you got obviously you've got the you know the future you know or the present i don't know future present uh version where he is sad and you know grieving and living through all of reliving all this stuff and then you see him you know in the flashbacks then when he isn't when he is just peter parker and i find him quite humble and you know just you know he's lovely to aunt may and he's like sarcastic in that loving cheeky kind of way you know when she was like oh um you know uh Miss Watson's going to move in with me. I really hope that's okay. And he goes, you know, look, my only issue is that I reckon you're going to be up too late playing loud music and causing havoc with the neighbours. And it's that kind of, I don't know, lovey sarcasm uh, that I really, I really kind of attached to and really enjoyed that. And then, and then you see him as Spider-Man then, and he's, you know, really sarcastic and quippy and, uh, you know, it was just really fun. And it was cool to see that Jeff Loeb could, go back and forth to all of these three different states quite seamlessly and it won't seem jarring or you know quite hard to get back from one one to the other yeah i agree um oh good it, it was done quite cleverly like, like like i say he's going through different things he's going through mm. the grief but obviously he's just reminiscent of how things were then and i think at that stage too he was obviously still quite new as spider-man and obviously he hadn't been friends with Harry. Flash was still, you know, picking on him type of thing. So the, even the part where I think he, uh, I can't remember how he worded it, but he wasn't used to girls fighting over him, essentially. Like he yeah. wasn't, that's another thing. He's like kind of grown up and being this kind of thing that's now like, maybe I'm, maybe I'm actually, I'm quite cool. For being a, a dork for so many years, I'm quite cool. So yeah, they kind of incorporated all that, all his kind of different tapes and feelings whatever else it's good yeah um yeah. i yeah i enjoyed the way he was written in this book but i i enjoyed jeff Loeb's writing though in multiple things i've read yeah. here you know he does superman and batman and he does like i enjoyed the way he writes characters because he writes them with not only the knowledge of the character which is a massive help that you should have you should know the character you're writing but he also has a respect for them which you know, sometimes people are just put on books. They might not like the character. They might not know the character. But you can tell he likes Spider-Man and he yeah. knows Spider-Man. And that's that's a massive plus when you're writing a Spider-Man book. <laughs> you know, you such can't... an emotional one as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. There's no way you're going to get any emotion across if you don't like the character. Because he yeah. could have come across as just this snarky, sarcastic, you know cocky superhero yeah well he got what he deserved because he was cocky so he lost the love of his life because he was too over cocky yeah. but we know that's not what happened who's who's you know? the writer that you think uh, they just ruin uh did, who swapped superman and batman and they took to they did tom, one... tom king and brian michael Bendis. yeah didn't uh, you said you said before that tom king like just likes to ruin batman well what, what do you reckon would have happened if he had a go at this <laughs> i wouldn't have read it <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, you know, you know. So it's the fact that Jeff Loeb wrote this that that's, that's an attractive thing for you. Yeah, that's good. That's and, good. And also, uh, I was incredibly surprised at the character growth of Flash Thompson. Mm. I, <laughs> yeah. know. Like, I know. <laughs> this uh, complete and uh, like ridiculous, over the top jock at the beginning just yeah. grows and ages and turns into a man by the end of the book. I know. Um, 
we had a comment earlier on from James and he said uh, Flash picking the join the army after Spider-Man saves his life was an interesting twist I, I got a feeling he was going to die doing his duty um, but yeah him right. him growing he needs yeah, to come was... Venom first so <laughs> say again. That. Adrian Venom oh <laughs> see just moving on to, for, from Shane's point where he mentioned about the, the Jeff Loeb having a good understanding of the characters and, and, and appreciating what, where they've been and whatever else. Scott, like, you know, you probably haven't read that much Spider-Man in the, in the few years you've been reading comics. No, so, and even you mentioned, you mentioned that... earlier on that you didn't know who was first, Gwen or MJ. Yeah. There, there are parts of this book that even I haven't read, but I know what would have happened back in the books, back in the day, that they've kind of touched on certain events. Yeah. As, even me now as a new reader, into this as well like it didn't affect me in terms of i didn't feel like I'm, I'm out of the story because i didn't read the original stuff did you feel like that that there was stuff that's happened that you didn't read but did you feel like you needed to read it just for this story not really i mean thanks to the films mm. i i knew what you know and what had happened and like a gist of it kind of thing but the reason why i asked earlier about mj and gwen who came first was because of the films like i i saw you know, Toby Maguire, yeah, Spider-Man first, and, and MJ was in that, and then we had the Andrew Garfield, and then there was Gwen. So I, so for me, growing up, it was always MJ first, and I was like, who the hell is this Gwen? Um, but then Gwen was also I, in the Toby Maguire movies as well, I should say that. Was she? Yeah. Right, so remember that was the, there in yeah, Spider-Man 2. Oh. Spider-Man 2, wasn't that the one, remember, she was getting attacked... And he saved her or something, didn't he? Is that two? Three, or three. Because that's the one where he's where he's all cocky and she pulls his mask down and kisses him. Yes, that's right. It is three. You're correct. Right. I know. Don't you, you, don't you, quiz, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's true. You can be forgiven, Scott, for not 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 knowing because Spider Man three um was dreadful. Yes, I agree. I agree. Let's not reenact the dance. <laughs> um uh, I can't remember what I was gonna carry on with. You said about the um if it if it bothered me, mm -hmm. like not reading stuff bothered me, and in a nutshell, no, I think it was done quite mm -hmm. well. I mean, the fact that you know, I I assumed her falling to her death was had happened, but I didn't connect the dots that it was on the bridge, or I just thought maybe like on top of the bridge was like a, a nice spot they went to together, like for Valentine's Day or something. That's what I assumed, but. You've cleared that up, so thank you. Yeah, yeah, because in the movie, they think that she died in like a, a random factory. power in an electric yeah, power plant. Yeah, right yeah. after you hear itsy bitsy spider being played, so they have the big joke, and then you're supposed to care that Gwen Stacy died, and it's like, pfft, nope, <laughs> wrong but tone for that film. <laughs> at that time, as a, as a fan of those movies, I didn't know Gwen Stacy died in the books in terms of like I didn't I fully did not expect that to happen in the movies so whenever it, hap it happened in the movies i was really like this this isn't real this so, she's not oh, dead there's no way you're this, so this lucky i wish yeah that's and that's awesome. looking back about now i'm glad i didn't know because again there was going to be fans expecting that to happen but i really didn't and that really i i did cry at the amazing spider-man 2 i'm not gonna lie oh, yeah. i also cried at far at you no know, no way home whatever the recent one was when god when andrew garfield cried oh. i cried too because i i felt that emotion I remember the those wounds from six or seven years previous watching that movie. So sad. Yeah. And this has just opened up again, the wounds once again. <laughs> like this that's just it's awful. The floodgates have opened. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, let's get back on track and let's zip those emotions up. Put them away. We're men, okay? We don't cry. <laughs> I'll be what I wanna be, okay? Yeah. If I wanna cry, I'll cry. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> I there's just one asterisk I wish there was in this book because I was very unclear you know like an editor's note please see when they mentioned that Tony Stark was on trial I don't know what he was on trial for yes uh, it was um, just a throwaway line but oh, I, oh, I, I don't was, remember that I don't know what it was for myself but I, I, I wasn't really obviously I wasn't reading books back then but I, I'm not sure I thought this book was a separate from everything obviously yes in terms of like it touches the Gwen Stacy stuff, but in terms of bringing all their characters in at that time, I don't know why they brought like mentioned that. As you yeah. said, if, if there was an asterisk to say, 
you know, sit through a civil war or the accords or something, yeah. by all means, do that. But it didn't, yeah. and you're right. And it should at least Likewise. say that if you're going to bring it up, say it. Yeah, like last yeah, week we had too many asterisks, <laughs> and then <laughs> this. So you counted it. You counted them this last week. week but... None, and we should have had one. Yeah. Yeah. Never mind. She's just, just still pleasing some people. She hates this one those well, just... <laughs> There's no there's no grey areas. It's black and white. It's like, you know, too many people. Nice. Yeah, it's just true. Uh, yeah. What so I thought I thought something was gonna go on between Peter and Harry. I thought the Green Goblin didn't lose his memory mm. after all, and he told Harry everything, and I thought the whole thing about him moving in was going to be like, "Come move in with me, be best friends with me, and then I'll kill you when you sleep." And I thought it was going to be something, like, something like that, um, but it never happened. So I was a bit confused with, you know, obviously he was just genuinely just being a mate, um, but yeah, it was See, just a bit. That's where I stand with the two separate kind of story arcs going on in this two different plots. That because Green Goblin he does remember him eventually. Harry does find out eventually. So obviously he's just going by at this particular time telling this story. Hmm. But as the reader, you're you're we're I think I'm the same as you. I was expecting Harry to know we're gonna say something or some sort of twist or end. Even whenever the very last issue where he fights Craven and he saves Harry and Norman comes up, you save my boy. Yeah. Like I was expecting it just to be and I know who you are, you know, like know something yeah, like that. Like, sneaky whisper. Yeah, yeah. But the, 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 there was just nothing. So for me, that part yeah. of the story seems empty. You think? No, well, there was. was ha, there was. Norman stutters on his words and says them again, and that's when he realizes, and he comes back. Oh yes, oh, he he kind of he, he kind of puts his, his his head in his hands and has to think about it, but he doesn't actually say. It. I don't think he knows. No. He's just, he's, does he? I think it was a really smart writing. It, you show, don't tell. You know, we know yeah. that he just realised that everything's come back to him now. Yeah. But, okay. But the one thing I was expecting was to see Gwen's death at the end. I thought it was building to yeah. Norman coming back and Norman getting revenge and Norman killing Gwen. And I, I just kind of thought that's how the book was going to end. Since he was moping and crying over her for the whole bloody six issues, <laughs> I had to sit through that. At least let me see Gwen die. At least give me the punchline to the joke. You know, you can't build it up for six issues and not give it to me. I, was like, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I think it's assumed the whole way <laughs> that it happened. Do you need to see it? Uh, it would have been nice. I mean, there's other books you can read it in, I guess. Maybe yeah, there should have been asterisks for that You were building well. to this. You, yeah, if you want to see Gwen die, just go, <laughs> well, go, yeah. go check out this issue. One of the books I was going to pick for this wave was, it's called The Night Gwen Sissy Died. And I think it might even just be Spoiler. two issues. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I think if it's, it may even just be one issue, but I, I'm pretty certain it's two issues. That'll be it. So it wasn't, wouldn't be long enough to pick um, for the nerd herd. But I was planning on picking that. But yeah, Omnibus Volume Two has it. I think it's Volume Two. It could be Volume Three has cool. it. Get on Fair that. Enough. Nice. Uh, James is right with you there, Shane. He thought that they should have had uh, the death included as well. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't know I don't why know. they didn't just. You were building to it. You told us what had happened. You were showing us the start of their relationship. You were showing it grow. You know, you built Harry. You built Harry up at uh, Norman up at the beginning to have lost his memory, and now's a great time to then skip ahead, however long it was, and when she yeah. died, and go and you know, and then his memory came back, and he took it out on me even harder than before by taking away the woman I love. Like boom, one page of just showing us. In this art style, Gwen Stacy dying. Yeah, is that what you so, want? You just want to see it happen in different art styles. Is, is that what you? Yeah, I want to see. It. You I want to sicko. I want to. I want to see. That's what he's going to do. He's going to sit and enjoy it and go, yeah, MJ won Gwen Nil. Like that's he's just so sinister. It's just yeah, drop her, Bobby. Drop her. Yeah. <laughs> wow, sicko. Uh, I'm just just writing that down. MJ one, Gwen zero. See, <laughs> I tend to think if they actually included the death in this book, like building up to that, you'd still get the emotion, but it's, it's like a different type of emotion. You're getting like the kind of dramatic effect of you know the, the death happening. If you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Whereas like, because we didn't get it, it's more like a what's the word? Is it somber? Like more kind of like 
yes, this happened in the past. We didn't read it as in this book as a reader. So we're just with Peter on this kind of emotional journey of his grieving, as opposed to like, holy crap, that just happened. I can't believe she's dead, like that kind of thing. I just think it would have been a different level of emotion if they actually had the death. Yeah. I think it would have packed more of a punch than, it, and it would have been less disrespectful to end the book on that. Like, if you end the book on the final scene with him holding Gwen's body, you know, that's it. That's how you end the book. You don't bring him home and have him recording messages to his dead girlfriend with his wife downstairs. That is so inappropriate. He, he was in the attic, to be honest. He couldn't have gotten more further away <laughs> if he wanted to. He could have. He should be renting a bloody flat in the city so that what? his wife doesn't have to listen to him through <laughs> the walls talking to his dead ex. That is not right. So I will so, die okay. in this film. The no ex is we <laughs> Surely that's worse. I, sorry, love. I'm going to rent a, a, an apartment in the city just so I can go to this apartment and think about my dead ex girlfriend. Can you like, imagine just going into this apartment? It's just completely empty, and there's just a tape recorder in the middle of the room, and just says Gwen no, one. Because you know damn well there will be a sex doll in the corner with blonde what hair. The, Jesus. What <laughs> the hell? Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. Just, so um, just on to the kind of sorry that the part we're talking about, like the 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 impact it would have if you seen the death. It's like this is like a pinprick through the heart as opposed to sledgehammer to the head type of thing in terms of the impact I think it's a lot worse than for me to not have the death scene it's just to have the kind of grief that way it's quite sweet that Phil say that yeah. again pin, pin, pin prick to the... a pinprick to the heart as opposed oh. to sledgehammer to the head oh, it's that's from nice Pearl Harbor that's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a line from Pearl Harbor when oh. they're talking about tech in Japan so that's where I got it from I'm not that unique and creative <laughs> yeah I but it's remember. nice though it's nice yeah. um, Lewis says uh, the death wasn't necessary in his opinion, I think uh, the story was the beginning of the of the relationship. When you see them finally get together, then remember that she's died. It hits that a little bit harder. Oh, so mm. sad. Fair enough. Yeah, and Wednesday spoiler. Hello, uh, Peter is talking to Gwen. Though you don't need to tell her that she's died. That, that's the right thing. As the reader, you're invested in his grief as opposed to the effects of her death, if, if you know what I'm trying to say. Mm. It's more like what the, the prolonged grief six years later on as opposed to the impact of it just happened. Yeah. yeah, but what did he feel? Like, he could have been telling us exactly what he felt as it was happening, you know, as Goblin grabs her, as Goblin lets go, as he's trying to, you know, reach her, as he's trying to get her, and then as he's holding her body. Like, if you're going to monologue through six issues, like, you could well, have yeah, added that. You've got to remember that this was, that was tip six, so was that... Uh, or tip five, so is this like every year he's done this? So it was 2002, so it's been 20 years of more tips. I'm sure he gets to oh, it yeah, some point, you know. I'm sure he gets there at some stage, yeah. Was it one a year? Yeah, that's why I was taking it from because oh, I just thought he just kept filling up the tips. One irritating oh. thing actually was every the start of every issue, and maybe you're right actually because that kind of the, the, the clicking sound, the whirling sound, that every actually issue. Bugged, it bugged me every issue, a wee bit to be honest, that, that kind of annoyed me. Like you right. no longer have to give us the the, the effects of like the video tape or yeah, the, yeah. tape recorder. Just so maybe you are right. Maybe those five issues were for every tape, yeah. possibly. Yeah. Maybe that's that's how um, I took it anyway. Um, let us know in the chat if you if you agree or not. Um, Dominic said, uh, "I think it would have shifted the tone to show her death. This whole book rings with this sweet melancholy. Uh, I think the death would have pushed it over." Better say than I. Uh, I Better put the night put it. So yeah, melancholy. Yeah, it's a good word. Oh. I mean, yeah, it's tough. I don't know where I stand with it. I'm, I feel, I'm feeling like I'm on the fence because I think it's because I haven't seen mm -hmm. the the death in any books, but you both have, and uh, Phil doesn't want to see it, but Shane does want to see it, and I I kind of want to see it because I haven't seen it before, but I don't think I want to see it in this book. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Not not in this book. You want to yeah. see it, but not it doesn't belong in this particular. Yeah, story. I think. Yeah, I think I agree. Just it may. Yeah, changed why I was feeling emotional. I probably still would have been emotional, but I just would have been emotional for a different reason. I think. Nice. Fair. I think. Yeah. <laughs> anything really else to say deep. yeah I know man yeah, just, this is a, uh, I'm really glad I picked this book because it's been a while since we've had an emotional kind of book and 
that's that's where I like to be. That's where I like to just stick around most of the time. Is the this this weird emotional state of fictional characters being dead. Um, um I, I am obviously a, a big Spider Man fan, having him tattooed on my arm. So of course I am, or that'll be really awkward. Show us that. But, but one thing. Nice. One thing that I uh, it, it's always bugged me with Spider Man. It is um, Harry Osborn's hair. Yeah, the... like I, 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 even to this day, I still don't know what kind of look they're trying to go for in terms of like trying to picture that kind of style on a real person. What it's meant to look like. <laughs> it's just like I'm getting it's like maybe tight curls or something, but it just really irritates me. And it's, it's every book, every everything he's in, that's the same hair. That's just his hairstyle in the books. And I hate it. Do you, I don't know why. I just hate it. It looks weird. <laughs> yeah. Do you think it was a way back when they only had like four color presses, like to add a red tinge to his hair? You know, like they did with like they'd make Wonder Woman's hair blue to show how black her hair was mm. in comics because they only had four colors. So do you think they just did that to like make it look like it was a like he was a really dark redhead? And yeah. then they've just kept the style going when they don't that, need to now. That's what would irritate me. You're right. Maybe that is possible. <laughs> I just think, why are people so reluctant to change it now? In 2022, just give him a different heart. Well, like, is it still he, the same now? In the, the most recent Spider-Man books I've been reading, it's the same. But it, maybe there Come are on. variations of the story and there are variations of Harry that have a normal horror style. But it's they've just never done it in thing. any of the films. They've yeah. never given him yeah. like zigzags across his head in red. But... Can, can you imagine? <laughs> uh, it's just it just lo- yes. and someone says it looks like corn rolls. Yeah, that's what I was that's thinking. What I, that's yeah. what I think, and it just doesn't suit to not get me like that at all. <laughs> it plagues me on. But um, it's yeah, it's this one thing that's always bugged me with Spider-Man stories I've read. Is his hairstyle? Please get rid of it. Please, somebody change it. Yeah. Yeah, um, I have one more thing that I've got to. I'd like to talk about if that's okay. Um, but we're going back to the art now, though. Um, and I think after after the page I picked where Peter and, and Gwen are kissing, um, and it's really like you know everything's colourful. You know, you've got you know the white coat, the the blonde hair, you know the skin, the dress, whatever. Everything is just nice and colourful. And then as soon as you turn the page. Mm. you know straight away we're in present time and it's just blue i know it's probably night time but it has that blue thing and peter's head head is kind of like silhouetted out and uh i'm looking at it now you've you have the mm-hmm. the whir 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 of the tape recorder in yellow and for me that's like that symbolizing gwen because of her hair and yeah the whole thing again it's just in yellow and all this uh sorry in blue and then all the sound effects are in yellow and then we get to the you know the photo booth photos of them both and that's the only thing in in real color um and yeah i think I'd, i think subconsciously maybe that's why i was getting even more emotional about the whole thing that it's just there's so much color focus on that yeah picture at the very end and then that's the, that's that's the beauty of storytelling with words as, as well as the art they're they're both in this together telling this story and they want the reader to feel like this. So 100%, I think, I agree with you. I, I felt the same. And, like, obviously, it talks about being blue, and it is quite, uh, it's quite a dramatic yeah. change from, from one page yeah. to the other. And I mean, seeing so it, it... Go on. I was just going to say, so again, it's incredibly disrespectful to MJ because he's saying he has no colour in his life anymore. Like, the colour died when Gwen died. And, that, like, he's he's got... A smoking hot wife. <laughs> and... I mean, I mean, I'm sure he does have a good time with her, but I'm I'm sure he's also allowing himself that time every Valentine's Day, mm-hmm. or maybe this Valentine's Day, to have a down moment. I'm sure you with your partner, you know, you're madly in love with him, but you have shit days. I, I don't yeah, record yeah. messages to exes <laughs> with him no, but, uh, You also don't <laughs> sling webs from your hands. Like you're not like it's okay not to relate to Spider Man in this in this instance. Uh, but the thing is, like I thinking about it now, I'm wondering. Obviously, we because we don't know about the, the five tapes. Are they for each issue or for every year? Maybe this is just him putting this to bed. I you know, so. in terms of I've I've grieved for so long, so many years. You know, MJ's been fantastic, appreciative, and she's obviously w- with me there too. But maybe now is the time to put this to bed, and that's yeah. why I decides to record his thoughts. 
I mean, like, like a final farewell to Gwen. So yeah, what Shane's saying in terms of like disrespectful for the MJ, it's just something he has to do. He has to just do it. Maybe he's doing it out of respect for MJ, so he can yes. put it to bed. Exactly. Yeah. And I, you know, I I really hope this is just a one year thing, and he hasn't been doing it for five years. Because if we if he was going to do it for the next year, and we got like a Spider Man Blue Two then I'm not sure it would hit the same, to be honest. As great as this book has been, I'm not sure yeah. it would be like, another one? What the hell? <laughs> but again, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll stand by it. MJ, um, Gwen came first, and MJ obviously was there at the time, knew, yeah. what, knew the impact it had on Peter. So I well, think it made them a, a stronger couple. Hmm. Yeah, Gwen's yeah. like the practice pancake. It always goes wrong. You always drop that one. <laughs> <laughs> Just call her a pancake. She fell from a bridge. Goodness me. Um, We're going to get banned for this episode. Yeah. So, um, Lewis, Lewis has said, I appreciate that MJ wasn't horrible about it and somewhat understanding of it. And that's the that's the great thing about her as well. And Martin has said, I felt like this was a one-off thing, finally getting that closure. And Swensey is saying MJ understood too and was sweet to tell Peter to say hi for her. I love that bit. Last thing, Phil. Just, yeah, just final thing. I don't take up too long because we, we kind of touched on it at the start, the whole good and bad thing. I think this book uh, gave me a whole new appreciation. I know the pancake joke was brutal, Shane, you're right, you've been told off. <laughs> it gives like a whole new appreciation for Peter Parker Spider-Man. Yeah. Because he, he's burdened with this great power, great responsibility. He can't have a normal life. He probably lives in fear even with MJ, the fact that like she's always going to be in danger. Because yeah. uh, if you haven't read Spider-Man stuff going on, we, they've been married and then also they've been not married because Doctor Strange wiped the memories, whatever else. Like it's happened. Like the, the, these things have happened. He can't live a normal life, and this good bad thing just gave me a whole new appreciation. And that's why I love him. Like he's again, if you have those super strength and spelly sense and reactions that he has, you should be like a millionaire. You should be like yeah. Robin Banks. No one's going to catch you. No one's going to know. But he's burdened with this great responsibility stuff and his yeah. life personal life peter parker's life is screwed up all the time because he has to be spider-man and this is just a big emphasis on that he he lost the woman he loved because the person who killed her knew that he was peter parker and yeah. went and killed her and it's yeah. just like it's just sad and it makes me like the character a lot more yeah it was great nice one thanks for that phil um now we're going to final thoughts uh, everyone in the chat, you know the score. If you're new here, though, uh, do give us your score out of 10 if you've read the book. We'll add all of the audience scores together, get an average of that, and add it to, all, add it to ours as if you're a fourth person in uh, giving us the scores. So, Shane, would you like to kick us off? We'll, we'll get your 4 out of 10 out of the way, I guess. <laughs> this, is, this is not a 4 out of 10. I bloody love this book. Not all the right. monologue. I, I love the... No, no, I loved, I, like, if I were to read this again, I'd read it again without any of the monologue oh, in. Just, just read this as, you know, the fun book that it is. Don't bring me down with all your drama, Peter. <laughs> I thought the art was fun. Um, we A few dings, pointy chins, <laughs> eyes looking for you and at you at the same time. Um, but, you know, Spidey looked amazing. Green Goblin was fantastic. All the villains, Vulture looked great. Rhino looked awesome. Craven, they were fantastic. So art, not a problem with the art. Story, I really liked half of it. I really liked the half without any of the blue boxes. I really enjoyed that story. Spider-Man dealing with, you know, two thirsty girls and the five bad guys. It was great. Super fun. Great read. If you don't want to be brought down, don't read the blue boxes. Just read the story. Read the rest of it and you'll have a gay old time. It was awesome. So I'm going to give this a six and a half. Okay. Oof. Oof. Goodness. That seems brutal. More brutal than the pancake joke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got one score in the chat so far. I know more of you guys have read it. Um, so give us a score. Phil, over to you. Um, I have a score written down, but I might increase it. I'm not. I'll. I'll. I'll decide after I say my, my piece. Basically, I loved it. I thought it was great, and I was a fan of Spider-Man before I even read a comic as a kid, watching the cartoons, watching the movies. But 
and I, I want to read more Spider-Man, and this is what I'm so glad that I've read. Like, it's adding on more layers to a character I already love, but I want to know more about. And it's definitely done that because I love the emotional pull. I, you know, Shane says, don't read the stuff. If you want to be brought down, don't read the blue monologue. I like being brought down and appreciating this kind of this this tragic event that happened, and it, it just makes me enjoy him a lot more. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I loved it. I, I've said before, I read this digitally, but now I'm going to be on the hunt, pardon the, the craven pun, to <laughs> uh, find the hardcover off this if they ever reprint it or whatever. Um, but there is an element to the book. The fun stuff that Shane referred to, it is fun. I enjoyed it, but it did feel empty in comparison to the kind of the, the tragic love emotional story type of thing um it could have been done even extra, an extra issue or two to kind of beef that out slightly if you want to but that's just me nitpicking the art was great love the art love the gangly nature of it um with with um green goblin i'd written down an eight but i feel like i want to bring shane's average up so i'm gonna add a 0.5 on the mine which will bring his up slightly <laughs> so you don't <laughs> think it's your exactly no I, I, i'm kidding I'm, I'm kidding I'm, I'm kidding it's only a 0.5 for me you cheater so we're playing but by those rules are we uh, no not at all I'll remember <laughs> that in the future don't you worry it's I will better than kingdom that. come it's one full point better than kingdom come i'll say that um right we're getting to more points now thank you thank you everyone who has sent us a score so far um okay up to me now um i'll say it again i love love this is a brilliant story um and even though it's a dark story talking about the loss of a loved one um it still brings up all those emotions um i will agree that it is uh it is just a really fun book to read and but i think that is something that they kind of needed to put in there. Um, they needed to have these kind of flashbacks and some cool action scenes because that's a Spider-Man book. And um, if if it was just all set in present time, then it would just be a mopey man in his attic on a tape recorder, and it would that wouldn't have really been a good book. So I think they merged everything really well uh, in terms of having the blue boxes, the monologues everywhere, whilst keeping your attention visually by looking uh, at these fights and cool scenes and the thirsty girls and all this kind of thing. And it was just all, it was a bit of fun, but you were also having the emotional side go along with it as well. Um, I will bring it down a peg because um, I don't think this is new reader friendly. Personally, um, you know, if you've never watched the movies and you don't know about the relationships and you come into reading this and you have no idea who Gwen or MJ is and, you know, why has Gwen died? And so you may not really get the big emotional hit. So to read this book, you may need a bit of further reading or prior reading. Um, so I will give it that. But I have wiggled up from the score that I've written down. Um, not because of Shane's score. Um, I've just really and genuinely enjoyed the chat, uh, the chat today. And everyone in the chat today has been amazing. And you've really brought this uh, story to be a bit more important sounding so uh i'm also giving it an 8.5 okay this is a landmark because when's the last time scott picked a good book this is, this is i know i know <laughs> last season <Why> no <laughs> <laughs> all right boys jeez okay the results are in have i made it to top 10 what do you think, think oh actually think... there's there's one more score i didn't put down there we go uh okay now i have all the scores so Let's go through them. Where are we? Okay, first of all, we had one from Kev. Uh, he couldn't make it today, but he says, 8 out of 10. Uh, it was a really good storytelling uh, of the era of Spidey. I liked Tim Sale's art, and the colours were good as well. Coming from an artist, he loved it, obviously. Um, okay, so uh, we've had... Um, there we go. So we got Comic Book Report, 9.5. Thank you very much. Straight to the point. Lewis, 9.5. Everything was amazing. The story, the art, and the play on the emotions. 8.5 from James. Uh, he loved the story and the pacing. The art was great, and the emotion of the grief really pulled at the heartstrings. Uh, Martin, really enjoyed this. The art and the story was great, and I appreciated the emotional side of Spidey. I will be hunting down the omnibus. It's a 9 from me. Thank you very much. And then just a straight-up 8 from Wednesday Spoiler. So, you guys... Touch and go. Touch and go. Given us the average of 
8.8. Cool. So Ooh. currently in the top 10. Adding that to Shane's 6.5, Phil's 8.5, and my 8.5, that gives us the average of 8.1. Oh, just? Has it just sneaked in? So does it hit the top 10? Let's have a look. Ooh. There we he go. He knocked himself out of the top 10 again. <laughs> I realize I've done the numbers wrong. We have so Skyward and Killlock a joint seventh with 8.1 as well. So one of those is going to have to either have to come off or we put this on the rest of the leaderboard, which is right here for you to see, uh, along with Chew. So mm. seventh place contains Skyward Volume 2, Killlock, Chew Volume 1, and now. Spider-Man Blue. Who and these are all, all the these are all my <laughs> picks. <laughs> I'm consistently I'm consistently an eight point one kind of guy. Yeah. So, there awesome. we go. Right, so yeah, That's there we cool. go. So, it says joint seventh with every other book I've ever picked, apparently. <laughs> and um I think it's time for us to tell you what we're gonna be reading next week for Philip's pick for Spider-Man Wave. Here we go. There we go, Philip. Tell everyone, please, what are we reading? Ultimate Spider-Man, Volume 1, Power and Responsibility from 2000. Can't wait. Nice. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. And don't forget, guys, that next week will also be your chance to give us your herd's choice. So if you want to keep with the Spider-Man theme, then please go ahead. We don't mind. We'd love it if you did. But if you wanted to pick something else entirely that isn't Spider-Man, you're also welcome to as well, and we don't mind. So do get your thinking caps on because we'd love to know what you'd like us to read after next week. But that's it from us. Uh, we've had a really good time. Um, I've loved it. Thank you, everyone, for joining. And all we've got to do now is uh, get our waves up. So, bye then. Thank you for joining. See you guys. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs> love you.